Hello, this is Jim Watts with the Tulsa World, a home writer for the scene section, uh, welcoming you back to um, our little uh, slice of the interwebs. Uh, I'm here with uh, my friend uh, Jimmy Trammell, also a writer for the Tulsa scene. Um, although I do want to pause with a word of warning, uh, do not make him angry. You will not like him when he gets angry. Oh, what, what's that noise I hear? Uh-oh. Is it not coming through? Oh, darn. <laughs> I'm not hearing it. Uh, that's okay. It's on my phone, but that's okay. okay. I can't hear it. Uh, what I'm playing for people who can't hear it is uh, the theme song to The Incredible Hulk television series that aired on CBS uh, back a few decades ago. You you were watched the Incredible Hulk television series or you did not watch the tele Incredible Hulk? I, I, I watched some of it. I think it was on the night when, uh, I, I think it was on a church night. And so I didn't see much of it. When you're the okay. minister's son, you, you, you don't see a lot of TV on the weekends. Well, the, the most amazing thing about the show is that the dogged investigative reporter who followed Bill Bixby and Lou Ferrigno around the country must have had an unlimited expense account and travel account. <laughs> Literally gone for months at a time in pursuit of the Hulk and Bill Bixby. And, you know, and uh, somebody's trying to call me. With, That's okay. Maybe it's the Hulk. I don't know. It could be. We've made somebody mad. <laughs> There's a reason we're talking about all this. And that's because Lou Ferrigno, who played the Incredible Hulk, or at least... Uh, the version that got angry and ripped out of his clothes and turned green, Lou Ferrigno, is coming to Oklahoma for multiple appearances this weekend. Uh, Friday, Saturday in the Oklahoma City area, Sunday at Vintage Toy Mall in Broken Arrow, and then I think back again uh, in Oklahoma City for a movie screening of not The Hulk, but of Pumping Iron, the weightlifting documentary with uh, all those weightlifting giants from the 1970s. Uh, so I've got a Lou Ferrigno story, and uh, he's had some very good news recently in that he had a cochlear implant uh, surgery. Here's so much better than he ever has before. I don't know if people know the backstory, but he uh, had several ear infections as a child and lost his hearing and, and essentially was bullied by other kids. You wouldn't think now you see this ripped guy that he would ever be bullied as a kid. But yeah, he was bullied because of his... Uh, hearing and, and the struggles with speech that he had when you can't hear, obviously. So, uh, but he had this surgery. He can hear much better than ever before and uh, probably will interact with fans much better than ever before because he can hear them better than ever uh, when he sees people at Vintage Toy Mall or these other locations. I mean, you, you wanted good things to happen to the Hulk in the TV series. He was a misunderstood monster. Now something good has happened to Lou Ferrigno. Well, good. And I, I, well, and I, I've heard secondhand stories that in the past he was he's always been a very uh genial person especially with with, with fans I, you know it's, it's not that he's been aloof or anything but uh although although i do have i, I do have a serious question about okay. the incredible hall um what polymer was used to create the incredibly stretchy pants the, uh, <laughs> you know, because he grows to gigantic size, right? His clothes explode off of him. The pants stay on. So those are some, yeah, if, if they could manufacture those pants, can you imagine what that would do here in the pandemic? You know, you can grow to extreme size. No one would ever know. The pants would still be there. Well, those, pants those pants never ripped in a, in a way that would get him arrested for public indecency. They would help, <laughs> you know, the thigh or the knee or something. I, I thought an interesting thing was in the 70s, uh, you know, before all these Marvel movies was they popped this Hulk TV series and a Spider-Man TV series with Nicholas Hammond almost mm -hmm. simultaneously. And the Spider-Man series just bombed. And the Hulk lasted for five years. Obviously, the Hulk... Uh, pushed the right buttons with viewers, Spider-Man did not. But at that time, we didn't have really the special effects that would allow Spider-Man to do all the Spider-Man things we, we saw him do in the movies. So, right. Yeah, I mean, I mean uh, he grew larger, but he didn't grow, he didn't, you know, you know, grow the tall, tight, halt, 
the height of buildings or anything like that. Like in yes. some of the, so, okay. Well, um, uh, to go to go from that to something a little more uh, sober, we're going to have a, an interview with Scott Ellsworth, um, who about his latest book called *The Groundbreaking*, which uh, is uh, about the Tulsa Race Massacre and the search for uh, graves of, of, of victims and his role in that. It's it, it's a, it's an interesting book. It's part history, part memoir, uh, in a way, because he is a very much a catalyst for uh, the search for for the graves, mm -hmm. and um, and we just uh, just the other day announced that the uh, the search at Oaklawn Cemetery has uh, officially uncovered uh, 27 uh, bodies that they they can't they can't say for sure that these were victims of the race massacre, but they are they were in a place that was not marked as burial sites. So there is there they need to be searching everything. But that that's also coming up. And, 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 and keeping on a, uh, a slightly morbid uh, theme, uh, another story we're going to have, Rose Hill Cemetery uh, on Admiral between, that's on the corner of Admiral and Yale. One of the city's oldest uh, cemeteries. Mm. Um, and it was the place where the... Uh, uh, the elite would spend their their their, their eternal rest, um, including uh, the uh, founding publisher of uh, the Tulsa World, uh, Eugene Lorton, and his wife Lady Maud. Uh, we we were shown their crypt, but uh, they the, the 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 cemetery has undergone renovations, including uh, the mausoleum, which is um, believed to be the oldest and largest mausoleum in the state. Um, and they are trying to slowly turn it into a kind of event center, uh, showing movies on the side of the, the marble walls outside and planning for some other things. So we'll, we'll go over the how the um, Rose Hill Cemetery is kind of, I don't want to say come back from the dead, but it's definitely being resurrected okay. and put to, put to some different different uses. So um, that's what that's one of the things we've got coming up. Well, that's interesting for sure. No, I, it's it's different. It is different. Well, I, and I did I did you know I asked you know what, what sort of movies are you going to show and. The, they the, the the first one they did was Casablanca, and they're doing um, oh the Audrey Hepburn comedy Funny Face mm -hmm. next, and then in July they're doing Some Like It Hot, and so they're they're not uh, as as the uh, the woman who is the the, the curator of of, of uh, the mausoleum said uh, we're not going to the dark side here. So the idea is to people to see the cemetery as almost like a, a community park as okay. much as a, um, a final resting place. So sure. trying, to, try, trying to remove whatever stigma of, of cemeteries have <laughs> that has built up all over the years. So, so that's what we got coming. Well, I got a question for you. I hope I have an answer. When you think of, uh, well, just lie to me, I won't know the difference. Uh, when, when you think of iconic neon signs along Route 66 in Tulsa, do we, does any one of them jump out in particular? Ooh, the, um, is it the Desert Hills Motel on 11th? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's been around for a long time. The El Rancho Grande on 11th and Utica, I know, has been around for a very long time. There used to be, it's now um, the, the, the Center for People with, with Physical Challenges, but there used to be a restaurant on the corner at 11th and Utica called the Pancake Place. And I remember the neon sign of a pitcher pouring syrup 
uh, <laughs> onto a stack of pancakes. So yeah, there's a there's a bunch of them. So yeah, well, the reason I bring it up is, uh, oh, I think it was 2016, the city of Tulsa and the Route 66, uh, Tulsa Route 66 Commission entered into a, a venture where if you wanted to refurbish your sign as a business on Route 66 in Tulsa, or maybe you'd never had a neon sign and you'd, you'd like one to add to the visual of Route 66, then you will get a 50% matching grant to get that accomplished. And they did the first one in 2019 at Billy Ray's Barbecue and Catfish on South mm -hmm. And since that time, they've now done 22 of these neon signs uh, throughout Route 66 in Tulsa. So uh, if Tulsa seems to glow a little more than it used to, it's because we've got we've gone kind of throwback with the neon signs, which I think are kind of cool. Oh yeah, I, I can't believe I didn't think of the Meadow Gold sign. That was the one people talk about. Yeah, that was yeah that was that was kind of one of the the starts and and one of the more recent ones. Uh, we a couple of weeks ago did a review of the Wildflower Cafe. Um, and they have, uh, they're right on the corner of 11th and Peoria. And they have a, a it's not gigantic, but it's definitely, it's a eye-catching little neon sign. Um, the funny thing is, when the sign is on, the restaurant is closed because it's only a, a breakfast and lunch place. Mm. So, but but uh, the owner said that they might later on, you know, be open later so that, you know, they can use the neon sign to draw people to them. So, hmm. and I, I never would have thought of this, but apparently, one of the perks gives people a reason to stick around at night to see these signs, and they might yeah. be an extra night in Tulsa instead of just being a Route sixty six day traveler and just and zipping through and going to the next town. So, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it, 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 it's and 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 it is you know that that little stretch on 11th from Peoria to Lewis is mm -hmm. really getting jam packed with uh, interesting places to, to stop by. So we have some food to talk about this week. Or we have a bit of food to talk about. We uh, uh, running this week, we did a review of a small place called Cyan Restaurant, S-I-A-N, is it 35th and Sheridan, um, primarily sushi, other um, Asian dishes, very good. Um, they, uh, the, the chef and owner likes to call it the best. Um, I don't know that I'll go that far, but it is definitely, they do, uh, hmm. they do some interesting things. It's not, it's not terribly, uh, not, 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 not your typical fare, uh, prepared a little bit different. And then coming up, we, um, uh, had a going away party for our, uh, colleague uh, Sarah Stevenson uh, and uh, turned it into a food review So we, because we took her to Madre's uh, Mexican restaurant and we'll have that coming up uh, uh, in, in, in the next week with uh, the opinions of many of my fellow staffers along with mine about uh, what they have to offer. So, mm. okay. 